Mic check. Hello, my name is Kent, and I'm Toaster's father. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for growing your business. Squarespace makes it super easy to create a beautiful website, sell digital or physical products, and share your creative content with your audience. I'll be sharing more about how I use Squarespace for my business, Love & Stitches, later on in the episode. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and this is... Kent. <laughs> also known as... Natalie's husband. And... Toaster's dad. Toaster's dad. <laughs> That's how he introduced himself when we were getting started here. So I'm so excited because we're doing a Q&A today. All of these questions come from Instagram and they're a bunch of different things. Kent doesn't know what the questions are exactly. Like we went over them a few weeks ago while we were driving, but just today I put them together in like a semi-cohesive order. So the stuff we're going to talk about today is related to, of course, knitting and yarn. We're going to go over some national park stuff, some van stuff, some travel stuff. And of course, we're going to talk about what our plans are for the future when we're done with this trip. Cool. Do you want to tell them what trip we're on right now? Like in like overall? <laughs> yeah, like what we're doing. Like and like where we are specifically right now. Oh, wow. sure. You can tell them where we are. We're at... Natalie's brother's house. Yep. And that's in this beautiful office, my sister-in-law's office. But we're on a trip right now for, we started in August of 2023, and we are we have a goal to go to all 50 states and film at something yarny, like a yarn store or a fiber mill, an alpaca farm, a dyer in all 50 states. And we have gone to 26 so far. And that's where we're at on this journey. Okay. I think that's a good intro. Mm -hmm. So why don't we get into the first category and we're going to let Kent pick. <laughs> okay. I think option three. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the options. Okay. So your options are national park, yarn, travel, van. That, those are your options. Four. Four options. What do you pick? Option three. Which was travel. Transition. What is the best part of this adventure? <laughs> Did she just blank out? Well, no, I, there's a lot of cool parts. I mean, on the surface, I guess, would be like seeing so much of the country. Yeah. Like seeing such different parts and being in places we normally wouldn't go, right? Or getting to spend a day in a town that, you know, one might drive through to get somewhere else. I think that's been really cool to stop and, and see things like that. Mm -hmm. Like learning just how diverse the United States is has been really awesome. I've definitely learned some new things about myself and maybe some things about where I would like see myself in the future. But my favorite thing is getting to like meet people along the way. So we've gotten to stay with people who we've only met online, which has been you know, it's kind of a social, like, leap a little bit. And it's been really fun every single time. We've made some really good friends that way. And then, of course, just getting to meet people at yarn stores has been such a joy. For sure. So, I, it's, it's tiring, but it's so worth it. Okay, number two. Um, are you excited to get back on the road after being with friends, or do you dread it? Uh, it feels like getting back home for me. Like getting back into the van mm -hmm. feels like home and getting on the road feels like home now. So yeah, I, I am excited. Like I get kind of restless when we just stay somewhere for a bit. Totally agree. Like we've been at, in Nashville at my parents' house for over a week. Yeah. Like well over, no, just like over right a, a week. week. Yeah. Just over a week now. And it's been great because we've had a normal like work week where we've gotten to get a lot of work done. But I'm like, what do I do with my time now that it, we're not driving three to five hours every single day? Sleep a lot. Sleep. We've been sleeping a lot. Yeah. Resting a lot for sure. Um, yeah. I don't think it's like, I'm sad to leave my friends and like leave the comforts of having a nice shower and a nice bed and everything, but we're always excited to get back on the road. Like it's definitely, it definitely feels like our space and there's a freedom that comes with it. That's unmatched. I think like even being in a, in an apartment on our own won't feel the same as being in a, like a mobile yeah, place. definitely. 
Okay, what is your favorite non-park destination? Because we're going to talk about national parks later. Favorite non-park destination. And I thought maybe here we could go with like favorite states and cities that are like unexpected to us. Because like we can't just pick one. We get that question a lot. Like what's your favorite state that you've been to? But we haven't been to all of them yet. Right. So New Mexico. But yeah. <laughs> Why New Mexico? New Mexico is awesome. I don't know. The food's great. The people were like super fun. It's really pretty. Kind of weird at in some places. Yeah, kind of quirky. Yeah. Yeah, New Mexico is really cool. I also really enjoy New Mexico, but I would say Utah is one of my favorite new states that we've been to. We spent a lot of time in Southern Utah going to all of the, all five national parks there. And those are going to probably come up on our top list. Um, but then also we really liked Salt Lake City. Like we were not there for very long at all, maybe 48 hours, but there was something about it that was just like super cool. Yeah. I want to go back. Yeah. For sure. How have you gone about planning your travels? Hold. This is a multi-part. I put a bunch of people's questions together on this one. How have you gone about planning your travels? Did you go out west and then back east? I'm confused. And then somebody just said, I'd love to see a map with a line of like everywhere you've traveled so far. Cool. So. Cancel uh, the planner. We've mainly planned around like events, right? So like last year we had Rhinebeck. This year, we knew we wanted to go to the Rose City Yarn Crawl, so we knew we needed to be in Oregon in March. Um, things like that and kind of kind of fill in. You know, I guess there's been some other things I'm sure I'm forgetting. We had a wedding. Oh, yeah, weddings. And and... Weddings, yeah. We had a wedding in the fall, and we had a wedding in the spring. So those kind of are like our, our markers for destinations, and then can't work so hard to like fill in the time and make the most of our time. So what, like, what kind of, how do you... Like what kind of tools and stuff do you use to plan travel? Cause we're getting, he's getting so good at it. And like, I'm starting to get sort of good at it now. Yeah. So, I mean, there's like a couple apps I use. I mean, obviously the first thing I do is like, just put into, I'm an Apple maps person now. I don't know how that happened. I was a Waze guy forever, but uh, I'm an Apple maps person now. So put in like our, you know, this destination to this destination, kind of get an idea what highways we can take. Um, and then I look for places we can either stay or things to do along the way or like, oh, this isn't that far out of the way. We can add, you know, an hour to go see this, whether it be like uh, last year's like some football games or some like national park, like historical sites and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we just plan plan around like that. Yeah. So we did go out west in the fall. We yeah. went all the way to California, didn't we? So we did in the fall. We did. Like Route 66. So we did Chicago to LA. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go from LA to Denver for that fall wedding. And then the next weekend we had to be in Rhinebeck. So we went all the way back east. Yep, all the way to New York. And then from there we drove south. And we went, we just hung out with like my parents in Nashville and your for mom in Florida. Thanksgiving. We came back in th for Thanksgiving. We spent almost the entirety of December in Georgia and Florida. And then we left Florida and basically took I-10 like all the way west. Mm-hmm. Like, and then we, you know, we exited like past Phoenix where you go to San Diego. It's so, like we were on the southern border almost the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then we, that's when it got kind of weird. Cause then we went up, we went up to Oregon and then back down to the Bay Area and then back up to Seattle and then back south, like all the way to Phoenix. And then up to. We went back to Colorado. Yep. And then we went through like Idaho, a little bit of Wyoming to Idaho to Utah to Nevada, 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 ne <laughs> Nevada. I always say Nevada too. She's like taught me wrong. Because um, like we went to the Knights game. We stayed in Vegas. We flew out of there to go to the other wedding. That was in Austin. So we flew to Austin, back to Las Vegas. And then we drove up back to Idaho back to Reno, Nevada, and then we went to like Yosemite. We skipped Utah in there again somewhere. Oh, yeah, Utah, my bad. We yeah. went from Las Vegas to Utah to Idaho, oh. back to Nevada, to California, Oregon, Washington. And then back across. A little bit of Idaho, Montana, a lot of Wyoming, and then we came back here real quick. At like, some point yeah. here, Kent will put the map up of like all the place, all the yarn store tours that have come out so far. We still have some that aren't out yet. Like maybe by the time this video goes up, I think the Reno one will be out. No. No? The um, 
Idaho one will be out. Oh, the Idaho one, and then after that will be Reno, um, Nevada. Because I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say the state anymore. <laughs> um, but, but we'll put up the map. Maybe you can make some maps. Yeah, I like. You maps. can make the zigzag as we're saying it, because you're like an animation person, right? Ken edits all of our videos, in case you didn't know that. Seems like a lot of animation. We're going on vacation in two days. That sounds fine. I think you can do it. I believe. <laughs> okay. or, to be, or to be really like silly and just enjoy. Yeah, that will be funny. Maybe you can do it in like um, paint. <laughs> that won't take long at all, will it? I got it. We're okay. fine. Here's the last travel question. Um, do you still marvel at the beauty of everything or are you getting used to it? Oh, I think we're lucky that we do marvel because we've been to such different places, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the coast of Mississippi is vastly different than like the Montana Canada border or the Pacific Northwest is so different than the Southwest. And so the fact we're going like really quick, I mean, almost too quick to fully enjoy or to really enjoy most places, we're seeing such different things so quickly. I think it's, it's fun. I mean, even the other day where you know, I, mean, I think some people kind of think of like Nebraska that we drove through the the length of Nebraska. And, you know, it's not at least where we were wasn't too varying, I guess. But coming f through there from there, from where we were, like in the Tetons and Yellowstone, like it is like you. I definitely appreciate all of it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get old ever. No, like it's like we're so lucky. We're so blessed and that I wake up every day feeling that way. For sure. <laughs> We're going to do national park questions next. I've got five of those as well. Cool. And a lot of people wanted to know what our favorite, like singular or uh, like a top three to five national parks are. Before we get into that though, we've been to, again, <laughs> so ready to share. We've been to 41 national parks so far on this trip. We don't have a ton more that we're going to. I think like 14 or 15 more right. that we're going to get to. And we're going to be like 10 shy of the total number of national parks. However, we're also visiting a lot of national monuments. Um, the MPS runs a, like 400 and something sites around the country. So there's a lot of them and we're going to a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But the national parks here is what we're mostly, they're, to me, they're the most like exciting ones. So drop your top, whatever you want to do. Less my, than five. My top 40 <laughs> national parks. That would be really sad to just leave one out. Who would you leave out? What, who's your, who's your bottom tier? My bottom national park. Oh, it's, our, it's so easy. I know what you're going to say, but I don't think that's fair because they shouldn't be a national park. But like they've done such a good job of what they have. It's a great site, but the um, Arch in St. Louis is not a national park. Sorry, it's really awesome. We great visitor center. They're doing a lot of cool great things. Great visitor center, not a national park. Okay. It shouldn't be a national park. I'll let you share now, sorry. <laughs> All right, top five, no order. Let's do Channel Islands. You should say what state they're in. In California, it's mm -hmm. off the coast. Uh, Capitol Reef in Utah, mm -hmm. Olympic in Washington, Big Bend in Texas. I thought that was ready for fifth. Uh, maybe Glacier in Montana. Okay. Wow. You didn't really pick any of the really super big ones. Like you, you didn't pick Yellowstone or anything like that. For me, the ones that stand out for me is I really like Redwoods. I just thought that was like such a cool vibe. Um, also really liked Big Bend. I liked just about everything in Utah, but I think Canyonlands was my favorite one. And, hmm... I liked Yellowstone, but mostly because of the animals. Like Yellowstone itself was beautiful, but not like a standout as some of the other like waterfalls and canyons and amazing things that we've seen. So it's been fun. Okay, we are next gonna talk about hikes because people ask what are our favorite hikes and wanted to make sure that we include Toaster, our dog, because he's gone on a few hikes with us. There's not, Lately, we haven't been to parks that allow dogs on the trails for very good reasons. A lot of bears. A lot of bears. Um, but when he can come with us, we try to take him at least on like a short short hike. A lot of times the areas around the visitor center are more accessible, family friendly and dog friendly. So that's usually where we end up walking him. Where's your favorite hike? Oh, um, I think you gave me one note on this. Pinnacles had yeah. a really, really cool hike. Um, Pinnacles National Parks in California. It's like south of the 
Bay Area. Um, they have like, I mean, they have a lot of hikes, but they have like a, not a main one, but it's like the, if you went on all trails, it's, I think it's like the highest recommended. That was very, very cool. It was. That was one of the first times we really pushed ourselves on a hike and went like over five miles. Yeah. In a, an elevation and everything. And we're still like kind of baby hikers, but we've come a long way from when we started. For sure. This At the beginning of this year. I think for me, it's going to be in Canyonlands. Because it was our last park we went to in Utah, right? Mm -hmm. So coming out of four other amazing parks, it's kind of hard to top anything. But we went on two really good hikes there. And I don't remember the names of the trails. But they were just like difficult enough to be interesting without being strenuous. And they had beautiful views. And like it just, it was so enjoyable. And they were like maybe two miles each, which is kind of perfect for, again, not too long. but But not just like not worth getting out of the car for. So I really enjoyed Canyon Lands. And we barely even touched the surface of that because a lot of that park, you have to have a spe like a specific type of vehicle to navigate. So we only saw a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to go back there. Toaster though, what would you say his was? I mean, probably Petrified Forest because it was like super dog friendly. Yeah, we could take him everywhere in Petrified Forest. And this is definitely a park where I fell in love with national parks. There was a one area that like looked like the moon and Toaster really enjoyed that. He loved walking around. He liked white sands a bunch too. Oh, he did like white Except sands. when you tried to like bring him on the the little uh, sled. Yes. Now yeah. he tried to pick him up and it was he hated that. But he loved he like jumping into the sand. He did. That's true. Yeah. He, he also really he also liked the hike at Indiana Dunes too. <gasps> That's right. That was like the first one we took him on. Yeah. Yeah, he likes toaster loves sand. What was so funny about Indiana Dunes? Indiana. Indiana. It is Indiana, right? Indiana Dunes. I don't know. Indiana Dunes is that um, you walk and then all of a sudden you're like up high and it looks like you're looking at the ocean, which you're looking at what lake? A great lake. One of the great Michigan? I don't know. Um, one of the great lakes, but it looks, it's so big. It looks like the ocean. And so toaster didn't doesn't like water and so he we're walking all the way right up to the water and the, the tide wasn't very high but it was like it was moving and he it, the water came right up to him and he just like backed straight away but he didn't know which was funny we thought maybe we would trick him by like letting we weren't gonna like force him into the water or anything but that maybe he would just get a little wet and like be okay with it but no he hated it <laughs> but he loved the sand he does he loves the sand so cute um when hiking, do you worry about animals? And are there any restrictions around driving and walking around areas with wildlife? Since Kent is a certified junior ranger, will you tell us what the rules are with animals? Yeah. Um, don't get close to wildlife. They, all the signs say keep wildlife wild. Don't yeah. Do not feed anything. Don't feed them. Why? Because they, they'll get like dependent on people and then it's a whole thing, right? It like ruins their like natural instincts to hunt and to feed and to find their own food. So if you love animals, you will not feed them. Yeah, it was like really jarring. And in Big Bend, we saw like a coyote, which is like in the street. And you like walk up to like your car and like look in the window like a like a puppy. I mean, he is, I guess. But, you know, yeah. it was weird for a coyote to do that. So don't feed wildlife. Um, yeah, I think like when we're hiking, I, I'm not ever really too worried. I mean, we did see the bear but it's whatever i think it's just we try to do a lot of like be prepared on like what we need to be on the like not look out for right but when you're at joshua tree you're probably not gonna run into a grizzly bear you know um but when you're at uh saguaro like gotta look for rattlesnakes right you just gotta like just it, it's just being prepared on what to what to look for and, and knowing you know oh if i see a bear what am I supposed to do? If I see a snake, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Don't antagonize, really. Just don't be dumb. <laughs> Kent and I are both on the side of, like, cautious. So we really try. And we're also big rule followers. And we think they're there for a reason. So we really try to stick with everything. And then since a lot of the parks we've been to are drivable parks, um, you need to be really cautious on the road and stay in your car when you approach an animal. I guess that's not entirely true. They were allowing people to get out of the cars and like Yellowstone and stuff, but you were supposed to stay like right around your car and not get any closer to the animal than like eight bus links or something like that was their indication. 
So we yeah. we followed all those and we were good. At Rocky Mountain, they had like the thumb thing, right? Like the if you do this and you can see it around your thumb, then you're too close. You're too close. Yeah, yeah. for like anything, even like a squirrel, it's like too close. <laughs> okay, um, Ken has been earning his Junior Ranger badges. You should share what that is, just in case. Yeah. So so uh, a Junior Ranger program all the national parks have them it's essentially like for kids but it teaches you about the park and i don't know it's a booklet most of the time yeah i I, what i typically try to do is i download them on my phone so i don't like waste the paper and i fill them out and i take them to the park ranger and they give you like a little badge most of the time it's a wooden badge and it has like the park name on it and yeah it's fun. And he learns about, like, he tells me things and I learn about the park more because you do them. So the question is, um, what's the hardest one that you had to earn and how many do you have? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know how many I have. I mean, I have 41 national park ones, but all the national park sites have junior ranger programs. So I have some others too. Mm-hmm. Um, the hardest. Ooh. Gateway Arch actually like took a while to do. Um, you actually had to like go through each part of their visitor center to to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's Chambazal uh, National Historic Site in El Paso was a really good one too. That like I mean you, I guess you could have faked part of it. Like you, you walked around the whole area. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean beyond that, I mean the other hardest ones like don't have to do with like the booklet but like dry tortugas and channel islands that's florida and california they're like islands and so it's just a little harder Hard to, to like get to. to get yeah yeah but. yeah we're very fortunate to have gotten to go on to good, those ones especially on good weather days too yeah yeah those are really cool last one for our national parks your favorite critter friend oh um do you want to think for a second yeah okay so my favorite critter friends are not in the national park. <laughs> that you've met like on the trip so far? Yeah. Okay. And you were sleeping during this, so you didn't get to see it. Oh, but yeah. My favorite things right now are calves. I guess they're calves. Baby cows. They're hilarious. So I was driving us out to like a lighthouse or something, right? Or To Great Basin National Park in Nevada. Oh. Well, I was driving us somewhere and Kit was asleep. <laughs> he wasn't feeling well or something like that. And so I'm driving in this very remote area. Like I hadn't seen a car for an hour and I see signs that say like cows could be in the road. It's open pasture. And whenever I've seen those signs before, no cows in the road, not even close. This time they were like standing in the middle of the road, being really funny, being really close. And the baby cows are so funny. So the adult cows, they would literally just stand next to the road and they would like glare and like watch you as you passed. And then the baby cows would run right up to the road. So of course I'm going like two miles an hour. They'd run right up to the road and they would be like, and like freak out. And then they would run across in front of your car or they would run next to your car. They were just so funny and so, so cute. So anyway, that's my favorite one. Um, another probably shout out to Channel Islands, like a Channel Islands podcast. The little fox on um, foxes on Channel Islands were super cute. They're so cute. What were the, um, oh, like Javelinas. I was so excited to see Javelinas in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, Roadrunners are a vibe too. They're kind of fun. Actually, no. My favorite critter friend that I saw was like when you first started, it was like last fall. You were doing Route 66 and you went through Oatman, Arizona, where they have like feral donkeys that were just like vibing in the street and like walking into stores. And then like the roadrunner there was had like a name, had like a relationship with the store owner. They were like friends. It was just wild. That was crazy. It was very crazy. <laughs> Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. This month, I've been working on NinnyNatty.com to get everything ready for Sock Week, and I have discovered even more things I love about Squarespace. First of all, they have templates for everything from pages to sections, which is how I made this really cool moving text, something I never could have created on my own. I also had way too much fun playing around with shapes when I was adding photos to the different description pages. Sometimes Squarespace was so smart, it would just modify the shape for me. 
Now, if you've never created a website before, don't stress because Squarespace makes it so easy, you can do it in just a few clicks. Squarespace has a range of options, whether you're looking to sell physical products like yarn or maybe digital products like me, you have courses or maybe patterns. One thing I feel like that is really important is snagging a great domain that you can tell people when you're sharing about your business. I was able to do that with nittynatty.com directly through Squarespace. Squarespace makes buying a domain super simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. You can also customize that by having your own URL, whether you want .com, .org, or something more custom like .art. Something else you might find useful is the ability to create member areas where you can put gated content like newsletters, videos, or even online courses. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash nitty natty for 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for being a longtime supporter of this channel. And now back to our video. Since this is a knitting podcast, we have a few yarn questions. Okay. One day I want to do another video with Kent, if he'll allow it, where we have people submit like, at, like questions about knitting and crochet or yarn in general and see if you know the answers to them. Okay. I think that would be really fun. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> All right. Question one. What does Kent get excited about at yarn stores? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I guess talking with people is probably the best thing. Just, you know, again, I think we said earlier, just like getting to meet different people. And a lot of the times you're meeting like the store owner and everything like that. And that's really fun. Yeah. That is really cool. There's nothing you like, you don't, don't really like look out for any specific yarns or anything. No, I mean, I, I like, no, I, I guess I, I, when I do, it's like always with a video in mind. I'm like, right. oh, I wonder what, how this shot should look or what we should get here or something like that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite knitted item that I've made you? What? She's never made me anything. <laughs> it's not true. We brought it. I know. I was going to do a cool transition. Okay. Transition. This. <laughs> well, how did you do that? Magic. <laughs> Why is this your favorite? This is, well, do you know what the pattern is? Nope. Yes, you do. Not a clue. Really? No. I made so many of them and you've edited the podcast. I thought you would know. You Kent knows my current projects, but that's I guess that's as far as it goes. This is the muscle bro hat. By Zolda Teague? Yes. I know what it was. I was kidding. Oh. <laughs> what a funny joke. Yeah, you make this like every other day. <laughs> so why do you like this one so much? Um, so this was a uh, Pokemon advent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just cool. And then you can flip it. I can't. If you're wanting to have a more serious day. <laughs> wow. Whoa. How did you do that? Magic. <laughs> I don't even know if that transition is going to work because I think I was moving the whole time. It's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. So you love the Pokemon hat. I do. Cool. I made, I made you quite a few hats, haven't I? Yeah. Because you're sure. not really a sock person. I've never made you a sweater. Nope. Or anything. So I'm not making you anything right now, like currently. Mm -mm. That's okay. My schedule is full. There's a chance for another hat later this year. There's a, a, a another advent that I think we're getting. It'd be cool to go with. I think so. I think I know what you're talking about. Hashtag little whoop knits. <laughs> I think it's already, she's already released it like for people to order. The Beetlejuice one, right? The what? I'm saying the word one in between. Beetlejuice. Who? One. Who? Beetlejuice. What? Beetlejuice. Kind of dressed like him right now. <laughs> you are kind of dressed like him. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next question. Okay. Do you want to take your hat off or you leave it on? Uh, I'll leave it on. Okay. In the yarn section. Sounds good. Okay, this question is for me. Um, when did you, or when will you start the 50 states blanket and what pattern is it? So I'm currently making a blanket that is all hexes with yarns that I'm getting as we travel. My goal is to get one hand dyed yarn that's dyed in every single state. A lot of states I'm getting more than one. 
but eventually I have a lot of leftovers and eventually I want to make the USA all the way Afghan by Lion Brand. <laughs> it's kind of a funny name, um, but this is actually a map of the United States where each of the 50 states is a different color. So I'm saving all the yarns and I need to get them organized at some point. Um, I might be doing that soon actually with what I've been sending home so far. Um, but I will not make that until we are totally finished traveling because I want to have all of the yarns so that I can lay them all out together and go, okay, so for Mississippi, for example, I only have one, um, one dyer. I have multiple colors, but I only have one dyer. So I know I want to use this yarn from here. Um, so like, I don't have a lot of choices, but maybe for like California, I have a lot of choices of color and of dyers. So I don't have to worry as much about that one because I know I'll have plenty to make sure it contrasts with the state state next to it. So I'm going to wait until I'm totally done because I want to have all the yarns, but also this is going to be a very stationary project because the entire thing is in Tarsha, it, which means I'll have multiple balls of yarn going at once. Will Alaska be to scale? No, it's like not quite how it is on a flat map where like Alaska and Hawaii are in a little box, but Alaska's they're like just in... out in the South Pacific. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Just in case you didn't know that Alaska is not really there. It's up a little bit higher than that. Okay, last yarn question. If there's enough yarn for two blankets, would Kent pick the yarn for one? So if there, I think if there's enough yarn from the blanket I'm currently making to make two blankets, which there is plenty, um, would you pick out the yarn? I guess from like the leftovers and stuff. Would you want a blanket from the... Maybe not like the States, but I try to think of something fun to do. Say no. Yeah, I don't think I want a US one. Yeah. I want a world one. A world <laughs> Great. So we'll get working on that next year then. <laughs> This is our last big section, and it's all about van life. So kind of travel still. So, hashtag van life. We thought we were gonna make a van channel. Yeah, no, we have our plates full with Nitty Natty so I think far. the van channel would have worked if we were allowed to film in national parks. Correct. I think since all we're doing is yarn stores in national parks and we can't film in like that, that land, it just makes it tough. Like we're not doing anything else. That's true, right? yeah. That's totally true. Yeah, in case you didn't know why we only post pictures of national parks, you need what a... Uh, like a permit in each park to film. Yeah, and it's you have to get them in advance and we we don't always know exactly what day we're going and they cost about $300. It's a whole thing. It depends on the park and, and all that. So it's, it's just like, yeah. it made it way tougher. If we could have filmed in the parks, I think we would have done more of a van channel. But really all the van channel would be would be us driving between yarn stores and national parks and it would be <laughs> really would, boring. That wouldn't be interesting. Okay, so our first van question is how long have you been traveling in the van? Uh, since last August. Yeah, we started out in August of last year. We shared a little bit of that in the beginning, but we were living in New York City prior to that. We had an apartment. We let our apartment lease end like when it ended. We moved um, our stuff and ourselves down to Nashville. We became Tennessee residents. Um, we technically like domicile in my parents' house and they have plenty of space for us. And so we can kind of come and go when we need to, but we live in our van most of the time, most mm -hmm. of the year. Okay. The least favorite or hardest thing about van life. And then the second part of that is then what is something about van life that turned out to be not so bad? The hardest part mm -hmm. of van life is probably two different things. I think there's like a general one where there's always a bit of stress mm -hmm. where, with just with the van, right? Like where can we park tonight? Even if we have a plan, right? If we don't have a paid campsite, which most of the time we don't, it's like, oh, I hope this rest area is open and not like, randomly closed like they seem to do in California a lot. Um, that's stressful. And then there's also just like the stress about, oh, the engine's making a weird noise and it's you know elevated because it's not just a car, it's our house. And it's like, man, I hope the engine doesn't have issues when we're like really far from a mechanic or something like mm -hmm. that. 
Or, I mean, you don't want that to happen ever, but, you know, it, it makes it way tougher if it's out in, I don't know, some of the drives we've, we've been doing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, I mean, it's not really a negative. It's just an added stressor, like, every day. Um, yeah, like another thing, something more specific. For me, I mean, I think it's it's been hard to do, like, the hobbies I have, right? Like, mm. I don't, like, I can't really play hockey anymore because, well, I don't have my stuff with me. So, like, th that's tough. Like, I, we were actually talking, like, I think this will be the longest I've gone without skating since I was, like, five, which is, like, super weird to think about. Um, so that's weird. Yeah, I don't know. And even just, like, other things I do to kind of, like, relax and I like video games or, like, watching movies has kind of changed, but like it's all worth it because we're doing so many other cool things, yeah. right? Like, of course I'd love to like sit around and play like wow all night, but it was cool to like sit around and watch the Northern lights in Idaho, right? Like that's such an easy trade for me to do right now. Um, so I'm not like complaining, but it is like a little bit of a, if there's one thing I wish I could find another hour in the day for, that'd probably be it. Definitely. Just like the little comforts, I think, are what I miss the most about just being stationary. It's really hard to work because we, like, that kind of leisure time of our day is now taken up by driving. It sounds silly, but I didn't think about how much we would be in motion in the car. And even if, I, even though I don't do really any driving kit does like 99% of the driving. I can't very well just like sit and work on my computer. Um, I can't like, you know, work on a more complicated knitting project to relax. Like there's just, there's just less time in our day and there's less, there's not really a space to like relax and be comfortable. Like I miss having a couch. We do have a bench seat in the back of our van. Um, but it's like, we have to be in sync on the same schedule now, which has been kind of cool for us too. Um, but it's like, it can't be like, oh, I'm going to bed and like, I'm going to sit up and work on my computer or like play games. It's like, we have to decide together when the bed goes down because the couch becomes <laughs> the bed and like, and then it's like the house becomes the bedroom and it's bedtime. Like it's, it's been interesting, but it's, yeah, it's definitely not bad it's just totally different and it also makes us appreciate like this time right now we have like three weeks I think our longest break from the van yet um and we are like soaking all of that in and appreciating it I have been playing well all night. so so yeah I know. watching a lot of movies Ken didn't go to bed till like 5 a.m um I was asleep though so I didn't even notice still got up <laughs> you still got up. Oh, what's one thing that you thought would be difficult but turned out not so bad? I know my answer on this one. Showering? Yeah, just like the bathroom stuff. Yeah. That did not... So we talk about this a lot. Like if we were to get a different van or a different style of like travel, like what would we change? And there's really not much I would change about Lydia, our van. But one thing that I thought we would need is like a bigger, like the bathroom that we got, which is like a big bathroom for the van. And we really don't need that. Like, I honestly wish we just had one of those toilets that you can like pick up and take out and like, it just totally disappears because we really only use it when we're super remote somewhere or we park somewhere that doesn't have a bathroom overnight. And that does not happen very often. And we definitely don't need the shower space. We never shower in there. We've never even tried. We will go to, like if we stay at a campsite, we'll shower. We'll go to Planet Fitness and shower. Um, we've never even showered at a truck stop. I mean, like that takes care of our needs so easily. And that would be some nice space to get back. Yeah, it'd be nice to have more storage. More storage, yeah. yeah. That would be great. I wish we had storage in the back of our, more storage in the back. So we could like get all those hoses out of there. Yeah. It'd be kind of nice. But yeah, that's not so bad. I thought that would be difficult, much more difficult than it is. Okay. Uh, lots of people ask this question too, um, in varying ways, but how has van life impacted our relationship and how do you manage to have alone time? Overall, positively, I yeah. would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Yeah, just, I mean, like, is there a, is there not a point in everyone's day where your, your partner drives you crazy, no matter what's going on? Like, I feel not like for me. <laughs> I've never felt that. <laughs> okay. Well, you're a liar. <laughs> but I mean, like, yeah, like sometimes, sometimes the it's overwhelming to be in such a small space when you're like, I just want to 
I don't know, clean the kitchen right now. Sometimes I'm like, I just need to clean for a little bit and get our space tidy. And like Kent will take Toaster for a walk. Yeah. And that helps me feel better. Yeah, I don't know if I really need like a lot of, like alone, alone time. I mean, alone time for me can be even be just like, again, watching a movie on my phone or watching a show on my phone or something like mm -hmm. that. Like I don't need to be like physically alone or anything. Yeah. So that hasn't been a big deal. And I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't feel that different than even like our apartment in New York. For me, it's like we were still working next to each other and like lounging in the same area and sleeping in the same room, right? So like the only difference is all like in one little area now, but it doesn't feel that different to me. No, it's not so bad. And I mean, we have some different tools that we use. Like we both have noise canceling headphones. Nope. Oh, okay, um, you broke yours. Yeah. Well, I have noise canceling. I'm much more sensitive to sound. They so. broke. I didn't break them. <laughs> I have... Um, yeah, those, and then I have um, earplugs that I use all the time. I don't. Yeah, you don't. Like, but you like to listen to like TikToks out loud on your phone, and I like to read. So I plug my earplugs in, and I can't even hear them. They're amazing. Would highly recommend. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I think overall very positive for a relationship. We we talk or kind of sit in silence most of the time. Like we don't listen. We listen to music a little bit. We listen to podcasts some, but most of the time when we're driving, we're just like. Yeah, our, our podcasts really are more like if we're going somewhere, we'll learn about that area, right? Yeah. So like we were just at um, the spot where like the Battle of Little Bighorn happened. And so we listened to like a four hour podcast or series of podcasts mm -hmm. about that and, and things like that. And yeah, did a lot of that in Arizona with like Old West outlaw -y people. Yeah. And we spend a lot more time than we used to without internet or without good internet. So mm -hmm. that's... We watch a lot less TV. Definitely. Than just because of how the lifestyle is. Okay. How did you rent the van? This person said specifically, like, I want to. My husband is skeptical. And then would you ever do this again with an RV? So we bought our van. But renting is, like, an option. We see a lot of people have, like, I think it's escape camper vans. Mm -hmm. We saw a ton of those, like, in the Western parks. People had rented those. Um yeah, I don't know if I'd do it in an RV. I think that's a different, that's just, like just a bigger undertaking. With an RV, you, I would feel like I would kind of have to get a campsite. And with having a van, it leaves us really free to be wherever we want. Like we can go two weeks without going to a campsite and charging up fully and getting water and all of that stuff. And that gives us a lot of freedom. My phone buzzing like crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Put that over here. Um, so... Well, our van is perfect for what we're doing right now. Um, I could see us though at some point when, because this is just a year-ish, a year and a half long trip. Um, but I could totally see us getting like something to pull, something to tow, like a camper, a small camper, which would give us a little more space. And then having like a Jeep or a truck or something that we can take, you know, set, like leave our camper take our, our vehicle and like actually go off-road places and like get to a few more places that we can't get to in the van right now. And I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 yeah I agree. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay. Last one. What's your favorite meal to cook in Lydia? Um, what's your favorite meal to cook? I don't cook. Oh. Um. <laughs> My role is to sous chef and i get the meal on the plates if i didn't put meal the meal on the plates it would we'd probably be eating out of the pots because <laughs> you hate doing that and i clean plating is such like an important to me it's like such an important aspect of food that it's like it's hard to do i don't know it's just hard you'd to rather do. somebody else do it and or do it perfectly yeah it's like yeah and I don't I don't it's a whole thing um I don't even know what my favorite meal to make is. Well, I can't say we found like a meal that's just like really exciting, but we do kind of have a, a rotation. We make a lot of tacos, like do. ground turkey, ground beef tacos, because it's just we're basically anything that is quick and doesn't use a lot of dishes because we're always trying to reserve our water stores. Um, there's also only one burner. Unless we stay at a campsite, then we have a camping stove, but you can't just like pop that out in Walmart. So most of the time <laughs> we're working with one burner. So we, we have to be a little creative 
-hmm. We make um, Korean beef bowls a lot, which is something we like to make in New York. We have a tiny rice cooker that like we use. Like a two-cup rice cooker. It's yeah. pretty cute. It's actually perfect. Yeah. Honestly, it's good for New York, too, Yeah. if we end up back there. Yeah. I don't know if we really have, if I have a favorite. What about when we actually go to a campsite? That's when we kind of get excited, like if we have a fire. Um, and the other day we kind of did, we, well, we tried to do like, uh, like skewers, but it like snowed. <laughs> and so we couldn't, well, I couldn't get a fire going in the windy snow. Um, no one else really could either. Some people had like an attempt, but it was a lot of white smoke type thing. But, um. So yeah, I ended up using the camp stove, and so we just took like the peppers and onions and cooked those up. Actually, in the cast iron, so it kind of still had like that little burnt thing, and I had you chicken and chicken. beef, and it was good. Yeah, it was pretty good. We have to make that again. Yeah. And we recently realized that instant mashed potatoes are like a really pretty solid, easy side to do that doesn't really take any dishes because I can just boil water in my jet boil and then prepare it in like the container I'm going to store it in. So I think we're going to be doing that more often. Although I love homemade mashed potatoes way, way, way more. It is nice to have something different than like rice or pasta mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. We have some questions that didn't really fit into the other categories. Okay. So there's like three of those. And then we're going to end with talking about what our plans are for the future. Because we have lots of questions about that. For the future. For the future, like after... We hit all 50 states. Yes. All right. So these, a couple of these are just for you. So okay. uh, favorite football stadium. Okay. Um, so we'll do favorite football stadium that's new to me from this trip. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we didn't mention that we also, Kent likes to go to college football stadiums and take really cute pictures of our van and toaster. Yeah. Um, so favorite that I went to a game at was probably the shoe in Columbus. That was very, very cool. Um, just to see the Sun Bowl at UTEP was very, very cool. I mean, I think that's it. Um, seeing the Bluefield in Boise was like just a cool thing to see. That was cool. Um, probably my favorite football. We, we did go. We didn't go to a game, but we like actually went to it and then we stayed outside of it most of the day and worked was the Rose Bowl. That's always going to be my answer for my favorite football stadium. Um, so yeah, that was just cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten to go to a lot of them. Um, somebody said, I love that Kent plays Dungeons and Dragons on the road. Um, do you play often with your party? We do. So we try to go once a week. What kind of happened was like the NHL and the NBA has been in the playoffs. Um, and so the teams you liked were playing Wednesday nights seemingly like every week. And so we just couldn't find a time to do it. But now we're getting back into the rhythm. So it should be just about weekly, I think. Yeah. And you actually are the DM. I am, yeah. DMing a campaign. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's a bunch of randomness. And that is a time where I put my earplugs in or my headphones on. <laughs> you don't like hearing me do all the random voices? I I love that you love doing it, but it's definitely not something I want to just listen to for three hours. What if you could hear everybody talking? If I could hear everybody, maybe, but also I like to watch. That's when I like get to watch my own YouTube videos that I love. And... No, you'd almost be annoyed with people because you would just see like me giving them such an easy thing to do and they just like do everything wrong all the time. That sounds funny. I Yeah, I that's a time where we do our own thing. Uh, okay. So this question is like, just for fun, like mm -hmm. the trip, just for fun. Do you have normal jobs? What paid the bills before van life was a thing? So this trip, I'm thinking of it as a trip. In my head, this is how I think about it. It's a, a trip for work, but also a trip for pleasure. It's both. Um, this is our, like, these are our full-time jobs. Um, we both, we support ourselves entirely with the Nitty Natty YouTube channel and all of the things that happen in the Love and Stitches community. Um, I feel like that's important to say, like literally we fund the trip ourselves and everything that we do, like all of our work, like helps make that happen. Um, so everything that you do to like watch the videos and support and everyone who's a part of our, our membership. And if you, you know, buy sock week items, like literally all of that is 
directly goes into funding kind of like the, this is our passion project, um, what we're doing right now. So yeah, this is our full-time work. It's not what we originally started out doing, but we can get back to that. Um, but yeah, these are our full-time jobs and this trip is, is part work and part pleasure, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah, How do you, you think about it? I don't, it doesn't really feel like a trip to me anymore. I feel like we have like little side trips onto it, but like when we're driving. It's not a vacation at all. Definitely not a vacation. Yeah. But I mean, then there's days when we're like in a national park all day and like, I don't touch a computer and I'm like, okay, like today that is feels a, like vacation a field trip. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of it feels just like a long commute to this place and here and here <laughs> almost. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I really look at it. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I don't know if I look at, look at it like through the lens of it being a trip though. Okay. Just feels like just how life is yeah, now. Just, and Just how we're living our life right now, how we're choosing to exist, I guess. Um, so before this though, um, in, let me see. 2021 is when I started working full time for myself and you joined me in like a year and a half later, 2022. So mm -hmm. we were already working together full time with like Nitty Natty with our full time jobs before we started on the road. Um, but before that, I was a school teacher. I taught kindergarten and then I taught um, reading intervention, elementary school reading intervention. I was in the classroom for about almost seven years. I left in April of my seventh school year. Yep. Oh, and Ken, Ken had an interesting job. I, I worked like in sports media yeah. for a long time. It was cool. I don't really miss that field. Yeah. You like working for me more? I like being a sports fan way more than making it my job. <laughs> you like covering knitting? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So people, I like to ask Ken if he's ever going to learn to knit and... That's kind of your reasoning. Yeah, no, I like being like removed. Like I, I, I really like video stuff and editing and and a lot of the stuff that goes with that, even stuff we don't necessarily get to do here. Um, but it's way more fun to be like in a field where I feel sort of removed. Obviously, I care about like fiber arts and you know knitting a lot and crochet about world <laughs> um, a ton. But like since I don't do it, it's just like one level of like, yeah, yeah. being away. And it's just really nice. Yeah. And I like that Kent doesn't knit because it kind of still makes it feel like this is my hobby and like you're, it feels like you're supporting my dream, which in a way feels really nice. And I'd probably be a better knitter. So. <laughs> Gosh, you put, you would actually be annoying about it. Like you'd be competitive and that would make it no fun for me. So please don't start knitting. <laughs> it's good to have them separate. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the future. We are approaching one year. So we, I know we said this several times, we started in August of 2023. So we are 10 months mm -hmm. into our trip. Um, will we keep going? I don't know. I mean... We really don't know. <laughs> yeah. We talk about a lot of different things. I mean, there are a lot of other yarn stores we're not getting to in the country and in other countries and mm -hmm. you know we really didn't get to set foot in canada that much we did not and we want to yeah um i don't know there's yarn crawls in asia and europe and like that seems really tempting um yeah so i don't know what's next yeah i mean we have right now if as long as we stay i mean we're gonna do pretty fast travel for the next like four months, I think we need to get to 24 more states and DC. Um, so, or maybe 23 states and DC. I think we have like 20, I don't remember. We have something like that left to go to. And so our goal is to get to all of those, have videos filmed in all of those. And we're putting them up now on Saturdays. I'm trying to do like live premieres so we can bring more people in to watch these and support these stores and get to see um, all of the amazing stores and owners all over the country. So we'll have those. That's kind of our driving force. And then after that, we've discussed quite a few different options. I mean, we are so fortunate that we can really decide for ourselves, like, do we want to settle down somewhere? We're getting to see a lot of states that we could see ourselves living in, um, but, or do we want to tra keep traveling, but do it differently? Like do it more slowly. We, I feel like we're getting to see a lot of places and just preview them and not really get to visit for long enough. So there's a lot of places we want to go back to that were just so amazing on our list. So that could probably, that's probably what's going to happen, especially when we don't have another 
like a house payment or an apartment that's, you know, eating up our income. Um, I mean, we have our van that we, that we paid for, but like, that's kind of it. We're, we're very fortunate to be in such a spot where we have all that freedom to make decisions. Um, do you think you'll ever settle into a house again? I don't know. I mean, like ever? Because we're only in our early 30s. Yeah, I mean... M- mid. Dang. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could see that happening. I don't know if that's something I see, like, on the immediate horizon. But no. I also think there's, like, a chance to go back to New York, and then, like, that makes it tough to get, like, a traditional house. But Right. Yeah. Probably not, like, a three bedroom home at any point in the next few years, but you never know. (laughs) No, you don't know. What do you know? I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. What if we We never know? Yeah. Especially with the way houses are right now. They're so expensive. Okay. After all 50 states, would you stay longer in one or two? I mean, probably. Yeah, I think so. Do I need to say those two? I don't know. I mean, I think like I really want to go back to Utah. Like that's the state that's really calling me right now. I feel like I want to go back and and have like a different vehicle that we can really explore um, with. I think that would be so fun. Yeah. Where would you go back to like right now? Oh, there's so many good ones. There is. I mean, probably Pacific Northwest, probably Washington or Oregon Mm -hmm. would be my. Yeah. Yeah. It's too hot in Tennessee. It's very hot in Tennessee. Yeah. Not loving that. Yeah. That's all our questions. We did it. We did it. Cool. How do we close out? All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. (laughs) That's actually pretty perfect. (laughs) Okay. Should I say something else? Nope. That's it. That's it? So it ends. That's how we're going to end the video? No, you can say something. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. I had a lot of fun. Did you have fun? I did. Thanks for being in the video with me today. Of course. We should do more videos together. Well, do you want to see more videos of Kent? What would you like to see him do next? Knit. (laughs) Of course. You you probably could knit pretty easily. Probably. Yeah. But I don't want him him to like it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, now you can close out like me if you want to. I already did it. We're done. You can do it again if you want. Bye. Bye.